Welcome to the SNN Network Canada virtual event. I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Cassa Pollock of Ready Shred Capital Corps. Ma'am, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this morning. I'm going to be going through the Ready Shred Capital Corp story um, and walking you through um, where we are to date. I'm going to slide over on the slides here uh, mm -hmm. through the forward looking statements. So our Ready Shred Capital Markets profile right now, our symbol is KUC or CUT, and we're listed on the TSXC. Um, currently, we have just under 79 million shares outstanding, um, and we had a price at December 7th of a dollar. Um, mm -hmm. Our current market cap is around 79 million, and our enterprise value out 107 million. In terms of our company overview and strategy, Ready Shred Capital Corp owns and operates the ProShred Security brand in the U.S. nationally, and we provide information destruction services primarily on site. We have 30 ProShred locations across the U.S. serving 40 markets. We operate by way of franchise locations and corporately owned locations. And we currently have 16 franchise locations and 16 corporate locations. We've also expanded our brand to include ProScan solutions, and that's providing customers with scanning and indexing solutions, as well as, as, well as our secure eCycle brand, where we provide electronic waste services to customers. We have a very strong recurring revenue stream called scheduled revenue, and that represents almost 50% of our corporate location sales mix. Our second largest revenue stream is called unscheduled or purge sales, and that makes up 33% of the sales mix. And the remainder is made up of paper product sales, the standing, and the electronic waste sales. And the company is consolidating the U.S. on-site document industry in a very fragmented $3.6 billion market with 750 independents. And we are the only national dual ISO and MEAD certified operator, and we provide the most secure service with offering on-site service. And right now, the company is the third largest information destruction company in the U.S. In terms of our strategy, we have a three-pronged strategy approach for long-term growth. Number one is to drive our organic or same location revenue and EBITDA growth. And the focus is on the recurring revenue stream and a focus on our target market, which is the SME market. Number two is to grow via creative acquisition. And that's by purchasing our franchisees as they retire and wish to exit, as well as independents with a focus on acquisitions within the markets that we already operate in or adjacent markets to take advantage of further synergies. And number three is to continue to support our franchisees to help them grow durable and sustainable revenue and EBITDA streams. So when they are ready to sell, we have a profitable business to purchase. In terms of the market opportunity, um, we have the 16 franchise locations, which is a total revenue of 30 million Canadian with an estimated EBITDA of 10 million and approximately 750 independents across the U.S. with an estimated market share of 750 million. And we have been executing on this M&A strategy over the last couple of years, and we've done $65 million in acquisitions since 2018, and with a 10-year EBITDA taker of 80% plus. So we're definitely on plan to continuing to ex execute on this M&A strategy. Most recently, um, on December 1st, we acquired one of the largest independents in the New York, New Jersey market called American Security Shredding. 
The current revenue run rate is 4.6 million US, with their recurring revenue being over 50% of the revenue mix. The cash paid on closing was $5 million, and a significant portion of $3.4 million in earnout, which is payable over three years. And that's if they meet pre-COVID level revenue targets and cost saving targets. And the cash payment at closing was funded 100% through bank financing. And the nice thing about this acquisition is it's located in our New York and New Jersey um, market where we already operate. So we view this acquisition as a great tuck-in opportunity with a lot of potential to consolidate routes. You can see here we've mapped the American clients onto our current existing clients in New York and New Jersey, and you can see there's a strong route overlay here. In terms of our performance year to date, Q3 2021, um, and our consolidated EBITDA trends, our consolidated EBITDA grew 57% in the first nine months of 2021 over last year. And that's despite the COVID impact that we still saw in Q1 on our loca same location sales, which were down $500,000. And the growth was driven by both the acquisitions, but also the organic growth. So acquisitions added 2.3 million in EBITDA, and same location EBITDA added 1.4 million in growth. We also saw improvement in the EBITDA margin, with same location margins improving by 500 basis points to 37%, and our acquisition EBITDA margins were at 45%. The growth and improvement in margin has been a result of continued improved routing efficiencies and density, or strong cost management, and the continued acquisition. And then in terms of our consolidated EBITDA margin, we also saw an improvement to 29% from 23% last year. And lastly, we do want to make mention that um, the Government assistance that the company has qualified for this year and last year are not included in the EBITDA results. So the performance here is strictly from an operational perspective. In terms of our revenue trend, 95% of our revenue is generated from corporate locations and 5% is generated from franchising. In Q3, our same corporate location service sales, so that includes the recycling sales, which um, can be quite volatile based on the paper prices. So the service sales grew 11% over last year, or $580,000, and our acquired sales brought in another $2 million to total sales. Year to date, you can see we have already surpassed our 2020 total sales, and our sales CAGR since 2012 is 31%. And our growth here has been driven by the continued investments that we've done in sales and marketing and the new truck fleet that we upkeep. And of course, focusing on that SME client market and the recurring services, as well as the continued acquisitions. Here you can see our trend of same location service revenue since um, 2013, I believe. Um, we were on a great streak here with 21 straight quarters of growth, and that's organic growth in service revenue excluding paper revenue. Um, and that was primarily driven by the sales and marketing efforts that we've implemented. Um, and of course, that was hit by COVID in Q2 um, 2020. But since then, sales have recovered fully from the pandemic, and we are now going past pre-pandemic 2019 sales levels. So in Q3 2021, we were up 13% on scheduled sales versus pre-pandemic 2019 scheduled sales.
waiting for the slides here to pass through. So in terms of acquisitions, um, as mentioned earlier, um, we're definitely accelerating our acquisitions and M&A activity. And so since 2018, we've conducted $65 million in accretive acquisitions. This year, we have done two acquisitions of our franchise locations in Virginia and Atlanta, as well as a small tuck-in in the New York market, and then the American acquisition that we just closed on December 1st. Um, which is our largest acquisition to date. And during 2020, we were also able to close on two significant acquisitions despite the pandemic. On to the next slide here. So in terms of our GNA costs, with the acquisitions we've done over the years, We've been able to improve our operating leverage significantly since 2012, and we continue to do so in this year as well. Our GNA costs as a percentage of total revenue have reduced from 41% in 2012 to 12% 12 in year-to-date Q3 2021. And we anticipate maintaining this level of GNA going forward as we add more acquisitions, and we don't expect to incur a significant level of increased GNA costs. In terms of our KPIs, uh, this slide allows you to see the trends of our main profitability and balance sheet KPIs from 2012 through to the first nine months of 2021. And we're on pace to have a record year this year. And with the addition of the American acquisition, we anticipate a strong closeout to the year. In terms of the balance sheet, our net debt at September 30th was 28 million, and included in that are earnouts that we've established as part of the acquisitions we've done, which was by design to protect our downside, and will only be paid if we achieve financial targets we've, we've set. Our debt to EBITDA ratio are under two times, and we have cushion of another one to one and a half times in our covenant. And so we'll continue to balance the amount of debt we take on for future acquisitions versus equity, so we are appropriately leveraged. In terms of acquisitions, we did touch on uh, the American acquisition that we just closed. Um, and this slide here just sort of provides you with the opportunities that we see in the market. Um, on a franchisee level, the revenue range for each individual franchisee is between 1.5 to 2.5 million. Their scheduled revenue mix is typically 50% plus, and they typically have anywhere from four to 10 trucks in their fleet with an EBITDA range of 30 to 40 percent and for these locations our purchase price is typically a multiple of five to six and a half times EBITDA. With our franchisees um, they've been on our platform on our pro shred system for 10 plus years so um, there is reduced risk there as they are using our systems and processes and branding. So the transition and the risk is a lot lower there. So we tend to pay a little bit higher of a multiple on these franchisees. In terms of independence, um, it's a broad range here. There could be anywhere from a one to two truck uh, mom and pop independent um, to you know an operation like the American acquisition we just did that has 18 trucks. So the revenue range is anywhere from 100,000 to, you know, north of a million dollars. And the scheduled revenue mix can vary as well, anywhere from 30% to 60%. And then again, the truck, depending on the size, um, could be a wide range. And so the multiples we pay here, it sort of depends on the size. Um, typically what we're looking at is, you know, do they have a high amount of scheduled revenue mix, 
Um, what is the age of their truck fleet? And are those pretty new? And, um, and then determine sort of an EBITDA multiple range there. And that can go anywhere from four to six times EBITDA. And lastly, just a couple of metrics on our Atlanta acquisition. This one we did in August before the American acquisition in Q3. Um, a great market to get into, a large market, population of over 6 million people um, with strong revenue growth rates that they've seen there. Um, so we're really excited about this one. This was a franchisee that we purchased. And their current run rate revenue is 1.3 million US. Um, their service revenue mix is very high um, and their margins have been very strong to date as well. So this one has been a creative for us to date as well. And that essentially concludes uh, my presentation. Um, if you do have any questions, or follow up, feel free to email myself um, or call, as well as our CEO, Jeff Hashem. So thank you so much for your time. Take care.